welcome this is ageless john teaching another android studio tutorial and today in this tutorial i'm going to be teaching you about these these templates and uh the series is going to have a series on all the templates basically that we haven't used because they're awesome and uh when we're starting up people usually just go right passes without even looking and if you do load one up there's so much code and intimidating stuff going on in the background that people just won't use them so we're gonna go into these we're gonna look at each one and uh, find out how to use them and hopefully I'll be able to help explain them and make them less intimidating so that you can be a better app programmer using the code templates um, let's go over this uh, the SDK tools are what actually provide the templates and these allow you to quickly create uh, different Android applications based on these templates. And these templates not only provide a way for you to create an entire application, but they also are able to help you create specific application components. Uh, the ones that we use, use the most, of course, are the application templates. Now the application templates are just one of three primary different uh, sets. Uh, they also have the activity templates and they also have a, a group called the other templates. While most people use these when they're creating new projects, you can also use these to add to existing uh, projects. And I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. When you're in your, your project, you just go here to your main activity or whatever it happens to be your particular main activity all right click go to new go down here activity now you can go directly to whatever you want or you can click gallery and this should look very familiar and then you can proceed from here so that's how you do it from inside an already opened project all right let's go over the first template and the blank activity template now the blank activity template is the very first one here and it is exactly what it says. It creates a simple blank activity. Um, the only things that you will have in it are this right up here. If you see this, this is the title bar. And this right here is what they call the option menu. And it will have a, a, a basic layout. Now if you'll scroll down a little bit, you'll see this blank activity, which the, has the tabs and sweeps. Uh, this will create an application with uh, three sections based on the fragment class and it, we have a tabber uh, user interface uh, It will include in it an action bar a fragment object for uh, section content and also an optional swipe gesture supported um, swipe design on the top which will extend the fragment pager adapter uh, and this will help to uh, manage the section fragments and we'll take a look at that so if you select it and click next you'll get this pretty much standard stuff um, and then right here this is really important the navigation style will have the swipe view action bar tabs and action bar spinner so let's look at the swipe viewer pages Probably the most important part of this is the get item method right here. Uh, this is what you need to configure in order to get the uh, quote unquote pages displayed. What you're going to end up doing is simply putting fragments here uh, that the method will return uh, that will be displayed in the activity. So you need to put all your fragment classes here and then they will be put in order of, of how you want them displayed on the screen. Next, we have the get count method. Now, the get count method returns the total number of pages uh, that you're going to have, or also called tabs. Uh, this is where you can set your number of pages or tabs. In this case, it's set to three. That means we're going to have three different tabs or pages. Now, I mean, you may be wondering where the other fragment is because there's no other java file over here well it's included in the main activity that's this right here that's your fragment and that's what it uses as a fragment now um, if you wanted to you could actually create your own fragment doing exactly the same thing it would have to be worded and coded a little different um, but it's also it's included in the main activity so this is the fragment that is used in this uh, template 
and you can run this and it, and it shows you how it works I just want to go into a little bit more detail so that you'll be able to understand uh, better some of the background mechanics and in order to do that actually I've created a separate my frag mildly uh, altered code from the main activity cut and paste and the new frag XML which will be used to house uh, this fragment alright so in the new XML I created a text and a button and I changed the background to red and the only thing that uh, you need to make sure you have correctly is I used hello Dave and if you follow the code you can use any words you want but um, it's imperative that you know what this is because there's a something later on in the Java code that checks to make sure it says hello Dave and it's part of uh, the program uh, text view 2 and button 2 because you know they're easy to remember so we go into my frag let's take a look at the Java now I'll put a link below with other resources that you can check out um, there is another tutorial guide that uh, does basically this and uh, that's where I got this idea and most of the code from and I suggest that you read it now it doesn't exactly fit this instance particularly perfectly so there are a few changes so you do need to pay attention to what's going on here um, but it's a good second read uh, so you get more of an idea of what's going on uh, first of all what I did was I came in here and I just did uh, right click new Java class created a new Java code and then I put the code in piece by piece and I had to import and this is heavily noted so you'll be able to find this on my web web page and be able to find what's going on first of all I named it my frag this is a new instance method return the refer a reference to fragment so public static my frag new instance and then my frag fragment equals new my frag and then return fragment and then my fragment is the constructor method of our class um, this is a Java thing you need to Google that if you don't know what a constructor is because um, it's a very basic concept in Java although it's not an easy concept uh, public my frag I'm just gonna include e empty uh, since we have a button and a text view on the XML if you remember back on our XML we'll use these two variables to connect to use them uh, uh, button two and Dave text because it said hello Dave and then this method will link the fragments to the layout so the public view on create view layout inflator inflator view group container bundle saved into state since we've done things in the past with the uh, fragments this should look somewhat familiar uh, and then we're connecting the fragment to our layer with a new frag uh, the view root view equals inflator dot inflator inflate and then we do the find by layout a new frag because that's the name of the XML file container and then false and then we put the button in the text view button 2 equals button root view dot find view by ID and button 2 Dave text equals text root view find view by ID text view 2 because that's what we named them and then on the on click that we're going to use uh, just to show off button 2 set on click listener a uh, new view on click listener and then it should automatically fill in this part but if it doesn't it's public view on click view view curly braces if Dave text dot get text to string contains and this tells you this pulls the string and if it equals contains hello Dave then Dave text set I'm sorry Dave I can't do that and then else if Dave text else Dave text set text hello Dave so when you press it it, set, it turns it I'm sorry Dave I can't do that um, and then curly braces in the close and then of course you have to return the root view and that's pretty much all there is to that fragment now let's go take a look at the main activity Java because when we're done with this we have to go back into what our main activity Java originally was and and change it a little bit see what I want you to do is I want you to come down and look for public fragment get item and you could probably just you know copy and pay, uh, get item probably the easiest way to be to get item and just search 
And the first thing that comes up is, is get item. Okay. Nope, there's another one. The second one to show up is get item. So be aware of that. So what I did was right after this first curly brace, you can put a comment, a comment, start commenting out all the way back to the bracket right after return null. Commented that whole section out. So this was originally there. And what we're going to basically we're going to do is we're going to oh, we're going to replace the override uh, public int in, integer get count uh, with uh, two pages instead of three, and we're also going to replace uh, this case with our own case. Now, if you wanted to, you could do this uh, with the default return my frag uh, new instance, but I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it this way because it's it looks much more like this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch position. Curly braces case zero, return placeholder fragment dot new instance position plus one. And this will use the placeholder fragment that we have down here to uh, to show a page. And if you wanted to, you could put multiple pages, uh, position plus one, position plus two, so on and so forth. So you could have more than one page, but I'm only doing two pages to make it fast and easy. And then on case one, which is our second case, because if you remember in Java, when we start counting uh, using uh, the basic computer uh, code stuff, uh, it starts at zero and then goes to one, uh, like arrays and everything else in computer science. Um, well, not everything else, but vast majority. Return my frag dot new instance because this is a new instance of my frag, and this you can use the default, but I didn't. And then of course you have to return null, and if you don't use the if you use the default, you don't have to return null. And then we add the new get count, public I, I integer, get count, curly braces, show two pages, return two. And that's all there is to it. And when you run it, it pops up just like this. And this is a, basically what you had when you ran it the very first time. But when you swipe it, you get your page that you just created as a fragment here and it says hello Dave and when you click the button it says I'm sorry Dave I can't do that and when you click it back it goes back to hello Dave so that's it that's all there is to it um, and this is the very first in a series of tutorials um, based on just the templates because I figure why spend so much time learning to create all these things by scrap from scratch when so much is already there in a template format uh, for you to use as the uh, app programmer. And on top of that, this stuff really, I mean, this looks scary. It really does. I mean, there's all these lines and, 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 but if you break it down and you read it and you follow it section by section, it does make sense. Uh, and there's tons of resources out there. If you don't understand how something works, for you to go out there and find out how it works. Um, so yeah, there's the first template and we'll go through all the other templates in the following tutorials. This has been H.S. John teaching other Android Studio tutorial. Glad you could join me. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and to thumbs up and I'll see you around.